All right, guys. So finally, it is time for the Q&A. Uh, I gave it a decent amount of time, I think. I was going to wait a little bit longer originally, but I realized that uh, we just weren't... We kind of hit a standstill on the uh, comments, so I think now is a better time than any to just go ahead and do the full Q&A. So this might be a bit of a longer video, uh, because there's both a Q&A and a build, which is what I promised, and I'm going to uh, continue on my promise. However, I don't think that we will be able to do all of the graveyard today because it's quite a big build. I've got to do, um, fuck, I believe it's the, it may be the Gone House on the Hill. I could be wrong. I apologize for my lack of Harry Potter knowledge, apparently. Uh, but like the house that Voldemort's in at the beginning of Goblet of Fire and um, the old man's house, I forget his name, Connor would remember. <laughs> But he's not here. So, yeah, I'm probably not going to do either of those two right now. I think I'm going to focus on um, Tom Riddle's grave and, um, like, the little underground area, I guess, where um, Pad... Not Padfoot. <laughs> I'm fucking this whole commentary up. Where uh, Wormtail comes out with Voldemort in his arms and uh, kills Cedric Diggory. So we're not too far outside of uh, Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade's just a little bit that way. I don't feel like spreading it too far away from everything. But I think it's far enough out that it's not too big of a deal. So uh, yeah. And if you guys want to know all the work that I put into <laughs> making this Q&A possible. I... Uh, I wrote down every single question on a piece of paper here because I use my computer to record and I can't do anything else with it while it's recording because I don't I'm really antsy about my technology and I don't want it, the recording to fuck up or something while I'm doing this so yeah so I have my phone open here with Google open so I could try to find some pictures of um, the graveyard here it's a little difficult to find decent pictures, but I think I found a good couple. So fingers crossed this comes out decent. And uh, I have a big ass piece of paper here with all of the questions you guys asked, and I'm going to periodically go through them. Like I said, this may not get done in this video. I'm just doing this video solely, or mostly solely for the Q&A in, in itself. So yeah. Let me just grab a few blocks here and then we'll get started on the Q&A. Also, I'd like to take this time to say thank you to the people who participated in the Q&A. It's really, it's really cool. It's really humbling. Even, even if it wasn't a million people who commented, I, I still really appreciate the, uh, the amount of people who did. I mean, 700 subs isn't a lot, so, you know... In the grand scheme of things, anyway. I mean, I appreciate uh, all the subs that I have, but in the grand scheme of things, 700 subs isn't too many. So it's pretty crazy to think that, you know, you guys cared enough to actually comment your questions. And I got a decent uh, array of questions, a lot less gaming related questions than I had anticipated originally. So that's pretty great. I mean, I'm fine with answering pretty much anything, like I said in the uh, the actual video there. So why not start it off with one? Uh, the first one, Will I Ever Do a Face Reveal by Jewish Boy Rages 69 I don't know. Do you guys want to see my ugly mug? Is that something that interests you? Because, oh, jeez, I almost dropped my phone. Because, uh... I mean, I, I guess I would if that's something you guys actually wanted to see. I don't know why you'd want to. I mean, I'm not against doing a face cam or anything. I just, me personally, I don't care much for face cam stuff. I know it's sort of like the big thing to do with uh, YouTubers and such. Like people do Let's Plays or whatever. 
it's sort of like uh, a staple now but uh, there's a few reasons why I haven't uh, biggest reason because I don't really have a camera to do it with I mean I could just use a regular camera and sync the audio but that would be a pain in the ass first of all second of all I just don't think it's really worth it I I make minecraft videos <laughs> What are you going to see my face reactions? It's just me looking at this fucking phone right now. <laughs> you know, it's it's not really, I don't know, not really the most interesting thing in the world. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> if you want to see a face for real, then I mean, I can make one, you know, but, uh, I don't really think that I'm very good looking, so I don't think it would really be beneficial to anybody. But I mean, if, if that's what the fans want, then that's what the fans want. Uh, moving on here. Uh, There's a point in life, you know, asked a good bit of questions, and his name is kind of ironic to a lot of his questions. We're going to get into some deep stuff now. Um, he asks, first, outside of gaming, what do you enjoy doing? Not a lot. Uh, <laughs> some of you guys may know or may not know, <clears throat> but I, I suffer with uh, some really bad anxiety problems. So my interaction with the outside world is pretty slim. Uh, I don't really go out too often because I really kind of can't without having panic attacks. So I tend to just not go out. So outside of gaming, I really don't do much. I mean, there's things outside of video games that I like. I like music, obviously. I like I like wrestling. A few people might know that because of my other YouTube channel. I like wrestling a lot, and it's uh, probably my one, probably one of my favorite things in my life, besides video games and Harry Potter. So yeah, I uh, don't get out much. So that's that's really the answer to that question. Don't get out a lot. And it's sort of like a typical, uh, typical gamer, gamer trope, isn't it? A, a basement dwelling dweeb who doesn't leave his house. <laughs> I remember I, uh, back in the day we used to make fun of people at Call of Duty for that. And now it's ironic because that's my life in a nutshell now. It's funny how things work out. Don't bully kids, it's not... Not beneficial. Not that I really bullied people. It was more of like a, you know, Call of Duty, you troll people. It's, it's what you do, you know? <laughs> people just do it all the damn time. And I'm not saying, like, that you should go out and troll people. I think uh, the older you get, the more you realize that it's dumb. But that's what I did as a kid, so. Uh, do I have slash have I had a girlfriend? No. Easy answer, no, because I'm an unattractive idiot and I don't leave my house, so it's hard to get my uh, get my name out there, I guess. That's that's really it. I mean, there's been a few women in my life, but none that uh, have taken my my hand in whatever. <laughs> Uh, what state do I live in? I live in the uh, the wonderful state of New Hampshire, where uh, our chief export is heroin, and uh, we have mountains that are pretty neat, and we have pretty cool autumn weather every now and again. So, I mean, it's not the worst state to live in. We have uh, no 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 sales tax here, so that's pretty dope. 
a lot of my friends make me buy them stuff on Xbox because they don't have sales tax and it doesn't charge them extra money. And uh, his last question is, does it bother me when they make changes? Changes? I, I wrote that so wrong. Does it bother me when they make changes to the castle? N yes and no. Uh, yes, because it gets annoying when you're building it and you kind of have to create for uh, the specific build itself uh, I think I think I mean when I went into this build I went in saying alright yeah I'm gonna build Deathly Hollows because I personally think that and this is where the the other half of the yes and no that I, this is where the no comes in I believe that the Deathly Hollows version of Hogwarts is the most aesthetically pleasing and 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 general architecture wise probably the nicest I mean a lot of people will have nostalgia for you know the the first three year Hogwarts you know Chambers Secrets Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone and uh, Prisoner of Azkaban versions of Hogwarts or even just the first two because Prisoner of Azkaban out of the clock tower but uh, I think that in terms of general architecture and whatnot that the Deathly Hallows version of Hogwarts is probably the nicest version of Hogwarts. So, in a way, like I said, yes and no. I don't like the change to the Deathly Hallows stairs. I don't think that they should have ever been changed because the staircases from the earlier movies was so iconic. I don't really understand the reason why they were changed, but... I built them because A, it's a Deathly Hallows version of Hogwarts, and B, because I built the Grand Staircase uh, interior as a square instead of a rectangle it was supposed to be, and the Deathly Hallows stairs kind of fit the rectangle look a little bit better. So there's your answer to why that my stairs look like that, if you were ever wondering. I was originally going to do the moving staircases. So yeah, now you know. Moving on here. Uh, well, thank you for the question. There's a point in life, you know. You, you asked a lot of questions in this, and I appreciate it. Uh, Joel asks, who am I? I don't know. Who are you, Joel? <laughs> I mean, I know who you are, but who are you? Um... Who are any of us, really? Uh, Jasper Waters asks, If you could attend Hogwarts in any year, which would it be? Now, I was mulling this over for a couple of days because this was originally asked a couple of days ago. And uh, I would probably have to say, probably Goblet of Fire, ironically. And... That is because I feel like it was the year where the most happened, I guess. I See, it wasn't, you know, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows, Hogwarts yet. It wasn't completely fucked yet. There were still kids trying to get on with whatever they were doing. You know, there was still... There were still teachings, and there were no Death Eaters in the castle and whatnot, so it wasn't fucked up completely, but it was still slightly fucked. But you also had all of the other schools that were uh, a part of the school year, which is cool. So, uh, along with fellow Hogwarts students, you had people from Bow Battens and Durmstrang, and, you know, it, I don't know, I feel like that would probably be the nicest year, plus you've got the whole Triwizard Tournament thing going on, and that's probably stupidly interesting to watch. So, yeah, I mean, I'd probably go with Goblet of Fire on that one. I forgot to write it down, but I remember it. I'm sorry, whoever asked the question. 
Uh, I don't, I fucking forgot to write it down, but uh, somebody asked me, who do I think I'm most like from, from the Harry Potter series? And I, uh, I, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say Harry. Okay. Now just listen to me before you roll your eyes. I don't want to say Harry because I feel like, you know, oh, he's, he's just saying Harry because he's the protagonist, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing, okay? <laughs> I went as Harry Potter for Halloween for many years in my younger days. And uh, a lot of people said I looked a lot like him when I was younger. And I don't know if it was more of a bullying thing. But I kind of took it as, as a as a good thing because, fuck, dude, I look like Harry Potter. That's that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, I I I feel like I feel like Harry. I feel like Harry is probably who I'm probably most like. I don't. He's a lot braver than I am, obviously, because I can't even leave my house because of a fucking mental disorder. But he uh. I feel like we both were moderately slackers in school. Um, Harry was... Harry by no means is a bad student, you know? But he was... He was lazy. But he was good. Like, he, he was good at what he did, even though what he did, he didn't do fantastic. You know, if that makes any sense. He, uh... He was a bit of a slacker, but when the time came to prove himself, he was always he was always doing it. And I feel like that that applied to me academically, because that's kind of the way I was in school, where I I didn't study for tests, I didn't I didn't do like anything in school, but I would always I would always come in for tests or whatever, and I would always do better than the other kids. And I'm not joking when I say that there was an instance in uh in ninth grade where that actually happened where I missed like an entire week of school and I came back on that Friday and there was a test for social studies and I did better than everybody in the class and the teacher was like oh well you know you guys should be ashamed that that Michael over here uh did better than all of you and he was gone for the <laughs> for the entire week and I feel like uh, Harry is sort of the, in the same boat in that situation. So there's that. And then there's the obvious similarities. I've always had long hair, long unkept. I, I barely ever comb my hair. It may sound gross to some people, but I don't really comb my hair because it's too long. And it doesn't look good when it's combed. It looks like I'm trying to be a, a metal star or some shit. And I don't want to look like that. I like my hair unkempt. And, uh, yeah, I've always had my hair like that. It's, it's a dark brown, unkempt hair. I've always somewhat had circular-shaped glasses. I mean, my glasses right now aren't circular. They're more oval-shaped, but they're close to being circular. And I do actually have a scar on my forehead, which I got while running into a pole in first grade, as well as being dropped on my head uh, the day I got my stitches out, so... My life is so fantastic. Um, uh, In Pixels asks, if I could study one Hogwarts class, which would it be? Uh, probably Defense Against the Dark Arts, dude. Just because it seems like the most interesting class. Uh, I mean, I've always been a big fan of history, but I don't feel like history and magic would be very entertaining. And, I mean, Care of Magical Creatures would be cool, but not, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge uh, arachnophobic, so I feel like Haggard would probably do a class on uh, Acromantulas, which are the giant spiders in Harry Potter. And that just would not fucking fly with me. I would not be down with that. So, probably Defense Against the Dark Arts. And, uh, 
He continues his question by saying, did I read any of the books before watching the movies? No. No. Uh, the further the further continuation of that question was, did, did, I, did I think of the castle any differently or the characters any differently? Uh, I, like I said, I didn't read any of the books before watching the movies. The first ever interaction I ever had with Harry Potter was watching the uh, Sorcerer's Stone uh, on TV. I think it was. I think it was on TV. I didn't go to theaters to watch it. I had no prior knowledge of Harry Potter before then. But this is probably back like 2001, 2002. So it was a. It was a long time ago. That was, I was about six at that time, which is fucking bananas, dude. Got to zoom in on this picture real quick and make sure I get it right. Yeah, I, um, five or six I was, I think I was six when I first saw Harry Potter and I had no prior knowledge to it, so no to the question of did I ever see or read the books before, beforehand. I didn't. I wish I had, but I also have this philosophy, which I, I tell people after I tell them that I haven't read the books before the movies, is I feel like the books were a continuation of the adventures that I already knew. I said it in the the the, uh, the podcast that I did with Connor that I've I've always had the books. I've I always had them. My parents would buy them for me every time a new one came out, and I would just sort of keep them in my room, you know, because I was a kid. I didn't appreciate good literature. I didn't appreciate good writing. And as much as I loved Harry Potter, I could not be asked to read the books. It was too much for me. So I just had them. They were just a thing that I had. And I just sort of said fuck it with them. Uh, the first time I read a book was The Sorcerer's Stone in 6th grade, which I believe was in 2006. So, yeah, I was about five books late to reading the Sorcerer's Stone and I only did it for a book report because I thought that you know with all the times I've seen the movie that it would just sort of be an easy project which it was and I read the Sorcerer's Stone for many book reports and I apologize for the dog barking in the background but there's really nothing I can do about that so yeah that's that <laughs> But I feel like, uh, like I said, I feel like the the reading the books after I have seen all the movies, because I never read any of them until about 2014. I know it's it's crazy. It's I've, I like I said, I've always had them, and as as I moved, as I continually moved from house to house, because I've done it a lot in the fast in the past, like five years or so I've, I've sort of lost all of my books I used to have like every book hardcover and then I uh, I kind of just lost them just didn't take them with me on moves and that really is not smart <laughs> so uh, in 2014 Coincidentally, when I when I started working on the Hogwarts map, I was stupidly interested in Harry Potter because ABC Family, or Freeform as it's known now, had a Harry Potter weekend. And I watched all of them in order, and I was like, man, why did I ever stop watching this series so often? So then I started working on this, and reading the books, and I read the first book that I fully read... Besides the Sorcerer's Stone in fucking sixth grade was the Half-Blood Prince because it was the only book that I had left. So I read the Half-Blood Prince and it was fantastic. And as I was going to say earlier, I, uh, I feel like after watching all of the movies before reading the books, there was sort of a magic to it because I knew the story 
from the movies, but I didn't know the story. Uh, there was so many. It was like experiencing all these new adventures that that you didn't know about, and that to me was awesome. People will say like people will say over and over again, like you know, you should always you should always read the books before watching the movies. Blah blah blah. I couldn't disagree anymore. Maybe it's just because of the way that I handled it when I was younger, but I feel like. If you watch the movies first, or if you, no, 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 if you read the books first, you go into the movies with a certain expectation, and you wa you don't watch them with an open mind as much as you would, you know, coming out of, coming out of watching the movies and then going straight to the books, because there's more in the books, there's less in the movies, so after, wa or after, or after reading the books and then going to the movies, you are gonna you're gonna notice everything that's missing instead of you know thinking of everything that's there and that's what I liked about reading the books after watching the movies is that there was so much in the books that wasn't in the movies that I felt like I was getting more bang for my buck because I was experiencing more of the story more of the characters that I know and love more of everything that I wouldn't have gotten if I had done the opposite so yes I did not read any of the books before the movies I was a big movie guy I was Harry Potter movie guy I wasn't Harry Potter book guy for a long time and there is nothing wrong with you know if people read the books first of course of course not I would never say that I just feel like the way that I went through it was personally the better way in my opinion and people are definitely free to disagree with me there and I'm sure some people will but that's just how I uh, it's kind of just how I how I theorized it in my own head and the dog is currently outside of my window barking now <laughs> So, uh, da, 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 da. could I imagine doing a building tips video? This asks Janik or Jan Janique. I don't, I don't want to butcher the names. I'm sorry, but I might butcher a couple from henceforth. Um, no, I haven't thought of doing any building tips videos. I, I'm very, uh, different when it comes to how I approach doing Minecraft videos because I feel like building tutorials are kind of patronizing because I don't feel like like Minecraft building can be taught I feel like it's something that people have to learn on their own um, and that I mean like a I've, I keep saying this, but I feel like people may disagree with me on that, and that's completely fine. But I think that inspiration is more important when it comes to building than somebody teaching you how to build a really nice wall or somebody teaching you how to build a really nice house because you don't learn anything when you're when you're doing a tutorial or f like completing a tutorial that somebody is giving you. You're not learning anything. You're learning, you're learning how to build something that somebody else has already built. And to me, I don't think it's worth a damn. <laughs> I think if you want to become a better builder, then there are better ways to do it. I think that watching videos of people's mega builds or, or learning, you know, how to better, better, I don't know, like s seeing what other people do helps you so much more in the long run because you can see something that somebody does and go oh wow that's that's interesting I would have never thought of doing that like I always point people back to uh, when people started using ice for uh, for reflections like mirrored reflections you know they would they would build something and then place an ice wall and on the other side they would build the exact same thing that is built but mirrored and it was such a, a, a unique effect that nobody had thought of before. And when it came out, everybody started doing it because it was genius. 
And that's something that I think that I, I've been trying to do on this channel for a while is just sort of give people inspiration. And I've gotten quite a few people who, who have said to me that, that I'm a huge inspiration when it comes to them building their Hogwarts. And I am absolutely humbled by that. I appreciate that so much because <clears throat> I never thought that I would ever be in the position where I could help inspire people. Because there are so many people who've inspired me <clears throat> when it comes to building. I think that I always learn new things from my friends and my peers and, and everything else that, you know, inspiration to me, like I said, is the most perfect way to learn how to build better. I mean, if you want me to give you a tutorial on how to build like a castle roof or something, then sure, you know, leave it down in the comments below. If you really want a tutorial. I'll give you a tutorial because I'm about pleasing you guys, which is why I'm doing this Q&A in the first place and showing you actual progress on the Hogwarts, which is something nobody really asked for, but I, I'd imagine people have wanted, I hope. So yeah, I don't think Minecraft building can be taught. I think that if you apply yourself and you give yourself, you know, if you give yourself a, a platform where you you want to bridge out and become better and work outside of your comfort zone and and push boundaries to what you think you can do and what you can't do then that's when you become a better builder I was not a great builder before working on the Hogwarts and I don't even think I'm a great builder now I'm just I, I think I'm average but people watch my shit because I guess I'm a great builder I don't know but I I'm proud of the Hogwarts and that's probably the only time I've ever been proud of my own builds so if you want to become better at what you're doing you need to apply yourself you need to work hard at being as best you can be because that's that's, that's how you get better at everything in life, is you try, and if you fail, you get back up and you try again, and you try again, and you try again. Nobody is going to be great at building the moment that they start playing Minecraft. That's just a fucking, that's a farce that doesn't happen. People can say it happens, but it doesn't happen, and it certainly doesn't happen overnight. I stepped out of my comfort zone when starting this castle. And it's gone through multiple stages, multiple stages since I started. And I'm super proud of how far it's come. I really am. But there's always room for improvement. And that's the number one thing I can, I can tell people. Is that you can always get better at this game. And that's why I don't... Another warp block. I don't like doing tutorials. I don't like tutorials in general because I don't feel like they're that beneficial to helping somebody build. But to, he to each their own. I'm going to move on from this question now because I felt like I beat it into the ground now. But if you want a tutorial, then by all means, I will do it if that's what you want of me. But yeah, just get this cauldron here. There we go. So, um, this is a long video. <laughs> uh, will I ever move to PC? Asks Yo Bling Yo. No. Simple answer to a simple question. No, I will not. And that's not because I have any sort of dislike for PC Minecraft. And I, I see the appeal. It's just I play on console. That's what I do. I like playing on my Xbox. I like, hopefully soon, will like playing on my PS4. I, I don't know, man. I just, I don't want to build on PC. I don't like keyboard and mouse. I've tried. I have Minecraft Windows 10 Edition. 
Oh god. Did I crash my game? <laughs> oh, no I didn't, thank god. Okay. Anyway, I have Minecraft Windows 10 Edition, and I've tried building with keyboard and mouse, and it's just not good. I mean, this version's still a little wonky with its building, and that's why I'm building a little slow. But... I... I don't know, man. Keyboard and mouse just isn't for me. And I like building on my console, because my Xbox is my home console. It's what I play on. It's what I've always really liked playing on, so... And I like controllers. I don't know. Isaac Mitchinson, I apologize if I butchered your name, asks, If I went to Hogwarts, where would I spend my free time? Now, I think all of my most loyal subscribers would be able to answer this question no problem. <laughs> but, obviously, obviously, uh, the clock tower. Obviously. No damn doubt about it, the clock tower would be the number one place. Because I just, I don't, I love the clock tower. I love the Prisoner of Azkaban so much. And I loved the clock tower from the moment that I first saw it in the Prisoner of Azkaban. I have loved it since that day. Because it's such a beautiful building. And the courtyard is so nice, dude. All the green and the overgrown, like, vines and the cherry tree and the wood bridge and just the way the clock tower looks with its with its giant pendulum and the beautiful front face with the clock it's so nice dude i love the clock tower in the clock tower courtyard i really do it is like my favorite part of the castle it's my favorite part of anything pretty much anything like structure or aesthetic wise in the entire series i love the clock tower courtyard to my dying breath so that is the easiest question that i've had to answer so far and uh it's virus asks would i make a realm i would love to if i had money but i don't have money uh it would certainly be a lot easier to have the map on a realm because people would be able to go on when I'm not on and they don't have to message me to ask me to get on because I don't actually play Minecraft 24-7, believe it or not, and I do get a lot of messages when I'm playing other games asking if I could get on Minecraft so I could show people the Hogwarts, and I'm sorry if you're one of the people that I've ignored, but I do tend to sometimes ignore people who do that because I do appear online and people can see when I'm not playing Minecraft. I appreciate the courtesy of the message before just joining my party, because some people do that too, and that's always uncomfortable. But, yeah. No, as, as it stands at the moment, the realm isn't going to happen, because I don't have the money to pay for a realm. Sorry. Um, is there a part in the books slash movies I didn't like, and what house am I in, asks Thor Ironhill. Hopefully that's how you say your name. Uh, is there a part in the books and movies that I didn't like? Um, in terms of books, I don't know. Uh, movies, easy. I don't. I did not like the burrow scene in the uh, Half Blood Prince because I feel like it just didn't belong at all, uh, and it, it ruined the aesthetic of the burrow because they they changed it to like that that smaller, gross-looking burrow from the Deathly Hollows, which it wasn't as nice as the other one. And there was no reason for doing that because it wasn't even in the books. It wasn't canon. I don't know why they did that. I mean, I know why they did that because without it, then fucking Half Blood Prince would be a really boring movie because they missed out on all the other plot points. But I'll get to that later when we talk about movies. 
Uh, but as in, in books, books, I don't know, man. The books are almost flawless to me. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. Don't know about the books. Movie, easy, easy, easy question. I, I don't think I can answer book. Uh, what house am I in? I'm in Gryffindor. I don't want to be, but I am. I wanted to be in Ravenclaw, but what can you do? You know, Pottermore doesn't lie, so I'm a no good, dirty fucking Gryffindor. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with being a Gryffindor. It's just, it's sort of like, it's got that stigma that you know, it's it's everybody's it's everybody's favorite house because you know people who don't watch Harry Potter, they they just Gryffindor, woo, you know. But yeah, I don't I don't want to be in Gryffindor, but I'm a Gryffindor. I could be it could be worse. It could be a Slytherin or a Hufflepuff, but I'm not. So I guess I should count my blessings. Um. Roy Von Koopa asks, what's my opinion on gays and am I gay? Uh, no, I am not gay. Um, but I do not believe that there's anything wrong with being gay. I think anybody can be whatever they want without having to worry about people judging them for their sexual orientation or whatever they do behind closed doors. It's none of my goddamn business. And that's as far as it goes with me. I, I'm not homophobic or transphobic or any any of the other degree I make gay jokes and fucking laugh at dumb shit but you know that just comes with being on the internet dark humor and all that but I personally in in my heart do not believe that being gay is wrong I think that people sh can be gay if they want my favorite game right now, and probably for the foreseeable future, is Life is Strange, and that game is full of gay characters. And that's perfectly fine, and I think it's adorable. I just recently played Gone Home, and that's a, a story about a girl who, who is gay. It's, it's the story where you pick up, you know, papers and, and, and hear a story about how this girl came out and became gay and her parents didn't accept her and it's a really sad but really adorable story about gays <laughs> you know being gay and, and that's it's amazing you know i mean it's it's 2017 gay marriage is legal and that's good you know people shouldn't be against gay people there's no reason to be they don't affect straight people in any way there is nothing wrong with being gay that's that's as far as I'm gonna go with that subject. And there's nothing wrong with being a transsexual either, or bisexual, or whatever you want to be. And it, it's the same thing with religion. I'm not religious myself, and but I believe that if people are religious, then they have the right to whatever religion that they have. And I will respect you as long as you respect me. And that's as simple as it is. That's as simple as human nature needs to be. You respect people and you'll get respect back. If you want to be treated like a piece of shit because you're treating somebody else like a piece of shit for having a different opinion than you, then then you deserve to be treated like a piece of shit. Simple as. What do I think of the current direction of Minecraft, and do I ever lose inspiration, and if so, how do I regain it, asks Jasper Waters. He's asked a lot of questions, so shout out to you, Jasper. Um, I think that the current direction of Minecraft is perfect. I don't think there is a better time to be a Minecraft player. With the introduction of cross-platform play, which is amazing, I've used it quite a bit, Thanks to being on Discord, or being a mod on Discord. Check out discord.gg slash Minecraft. And, <laughs> shameless plug. And it's awesome being able to play with just anybody. You know, people have come onto my map now who were never able to do it before because it was on Xbox. And I can actually transfer my map to Windows 10 and put it up for download now. Which is even better. 
You know, people who play on console aren't so restricted anymore. And it's great. We've got command blocks now. And soon we're going to have shaders. And that is all I've ever asked for in Minecraft is shaders because I'm a builder. And shaders are so integral in building. So that is amazing. It's amazing. I don't think any time is better to be a Minecraft fan than right now. People will always look back on the nostalgia and be like, oh no, I think that this time was a better time to be blah, 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 Java's dying, this, that, and whatever. But I think that right now is probably the best time to play Minecraft. And that's that. And uh, do I ever lose inspiration? And if so, how do I regain it? Um, I do lose inspiration a lot. And you've probably seen it if you've been a follower of the channel for a while. Uh, there are times when I just don't do any Harry Potter Minecraft stuff where just no footage of the map is coming out. And that's not because I of all the issues that I've been having with the map. I mean, that's part of it, but the other half is there are times when I do get sick of building on here and it's it sucks but that's just how it is you know like you can't build forever without getting bored it's it's a it's a stimulation thing your mind always has to be stimulated and if it's not then you always look for something else to stimulate it that's just how human nature works so yes there are many times where I do get sick of building and I take breaks like anybody else uh, that's why I started doing the Minecraft New Vegas stuff because uh, Fallout is another thing I'm really passionate about and I think that that right there is the key within itself is you need to find something that you're really passionate about if you find something that you're passionate about building and you really love doing it then that is when you will do it your best and that's rang true for me for a long time because I feel like if I had not enjoyed Harry Potter so much, I don't think this map would be nearly as big as it is right now. And if I didn't enjoy it, fucking fly. There's a fly in my room being a dick. <laughs> if I didn't enjoy uh, Fallout, I probably wouldn't have started that map either. And I think that that with 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 finding something that you really enjoy building you will find that you will always come back to it because it's sort of like your baby at some point it it's something you're really proud of potentially and you don't want to leave it for too long you just want to let it sit so that the next time that you come back to it it will feel special again i've been in the mood to work on the hogwarts so much since since more recently when i when i realized this version it stopped being as buggy, I guess. And it's so refreshing to be able to come back here and work on the on the castle again because I've I haven't worked on it in a long time. And it's fucking awesome that I can come back and just boom, just continue where I left off, just working and doing work and it, it it's fucking awesome. It's great. And that's when I think you come back. That's how you regain the inspiration. Of course, I could go back and just rewatch the movies, and that would probably make me want to build again, too. But if it's something you're passionate about, you will undoubtedly go back to it. And that's something I can always, always tell people who, who ask me this question. If you love what you're doing, it won't feel like a job to you. And that's that. And that's, that's a motto I've tried to live by when it comes to building in Minecraft. Never build something that you don't want to build. Because you will hate it. Uh, my favorite, least favorite Harry Potter book and movie asks Jewish Boy Rages 69 uh, favorite book and movie are both The Prisoner of Azkaban, simply because Prisoner of Azkaban fucking rocks. And uh, that's just, that's an easy one for me because I just, I love the fucking movie and the book so much. I've said it on the Harry Potter podcast yet again, I will plug it yet again. 
uh, the one I did with Connor pretty recently, I would say a few months ago, that uh, anytime I think of Harry Potter, I think of Prisoner of Azkaban. And that's just, it's not because it was like the first movie I've seen or anything, it's just because that is the movie that I have the fondest memory of. And that's that's that. I mean, I, I love the clock tower because of the Prisoner of Azkaban. I love the ambiance and the story and and just the way that I'll fucking fly. The way that Alfonso Cuaron modernized the Harry Potter series and made it feel dark and, and gritty for the first time and the Dementors and 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 just everything everything in that movie was beautiful beyond belief and the scottish isles that they use for the backdrop instead of the 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 usual castle set they used for the first two movies it's just mm, it's pristine it's beautiful it's crisp it's a it's a wondrous masterpiece <laughs> is the prisoner of azkaban to me and i will always always go back to saying that that's my favorite always least favorite movie is the half blood prince because they missed out on so many things like i alluded to earlier uh they didn't have dumbledore's funeral they didn't have the battle of the astronomy tower which is insanely important because bill gets turned into a fucking werewolf there um they skipped out on most of voldemort's memories for cheap comedy bits and shitty romance bits which shouldn't have been in the movie in the fucking first place um, the burrow scene, which didn't need to be in there, which I fucking hate. And I mean, I don't know. That's about it, really. Uh, it was a beautifully shot movie. It looked amazing cinematography wise. The shots were really nice and the, the film grain was really nice in that movie. It looked dark and savvy and it, it did its job in setting the atmosphere, but I feel like they missed out on too much. And that's, that's the biggest gripe I have with the half blood prince. It was a real big disappointment to me. Uh, least favorite book. I don't fucking know, man. Maybe, maybe Sorcerer's Stone just because it's the shortest. That's my biggest gripe. It's because it's the shortest, and it's the first, and it's probably the book where the least happens. Again, some people will disagree with that because, you know, I it's the first movie or the first book, and then it's it sets the entire story, but I didn't I didn't grow up you know, I didn't figure or find Harry Potter through the first book, so it's it doesn't have as much sentimental value to me than it does other people. I mean I appreciate it for what it is because it did set the story that I love so much, but it is pretty plain in comparison to the other books. And uh, the final question is by Jura, Jira Verami. I'm sorry if I fuck up your name, dude. I'm so sorry. He asks, what is the meaning of life? Now, I, I, I made sure that I put this at the bottom of this list because I feel like I feel like sometimes I do ramble on. Uh, on, on websites and such as a person who who has had a lot of time in his life to just reflect on the shitty nature of human beings and shit because I'm always buying my computer reading and learning about everything that's going on in this world I feel like the meaning of life is to just enjoy what you have to be thankful for everything that you've been afforded whether you have everything or whether you have nothing the gift of life is enough to continue pushing you forward i have never been depressed in my life and i don't mean to bait here when i say this but i certainly have plenty to be depressed about but I've never felt like I've been actually depressed like clinically depressed I am a pretty happy person who self-deprecates a lot sure but I've never felt like my life was worthless even though sometimes I do believe that there are 
there are times when I do believe that, but it's never been a true, what the fuck am I still doing here on this earth? Because I appreciate everyone and everything in my life for what it is. The meaning of life to me is not happiness because happiness never lasts forever, but the fabrication of happiness through through family and friends and life and realizing just being here right now is I don't want to say a blessing because I'm not religious but it's a blessing it's it's truly something that some people have to who or do take advantage of I think I feel like Sometimes we don't realize how great we have it, okay? Not everybody has a perfect life. I don't have a perfect life. I'm sure everybody listening to this right now doesn't have a perfect life. But continuing to be strong and content and inspired and having people who are there along with you to help guide you along in this life is is ultimately the meaning of life is just being here is being alive is being almost happy but like i said happiness Happiness can, it never really lasts. It's sort of a fabrication in its own right, but there's really no other way I can describe it because I didn't really write any of this down beforehand, but you are you, and that's what makes you special, okay? There's only one you. There's only one you. You. And that's, that's it. That's, that's the meaning of life is that there's only one you and only you can change the course of your life. So if you need a meaning to life, then you should look no further than your own mind. What do you believe is the meaning of life? What do you believe you should be doing with your life? And that's that. I probably, probably nothing I just made or said made any sense at all. And that's true. But a question like what is the meaning of life is always something hard to answer because everybody you ask this question to will have a different answer. I just believe that being here on this earth and continuing to live even when you know, time, times are rough or things are hard or, you know, somebody tells you that you shouldn't be you or you shouldn't do this because it's weird or even going back to an earlier question, being gay or being transsexual or being whatever. The meaning of life is to just live, man, to just be you, to be everything that you want to be because in 60 70 years you will be gone and somebody will replace or replace your footing or the house you used to live in and you will be forgotten eventually and you know i i never prescribed to or subscribed to the you know try to work hard so that people remember you when you're dead because you you're never going to be remembered as an average person in America in 2017. Nobody's going to remember you in a hundred years because we're just bystanders. If you want to push in your life to become a somebody, then by all means. But you should always live to be happy with who you are. Okay, if you are content with how you live your life, and how you are on the inside, and you're proud of who you are, then that is ultimately the meaning of life. That you don't let these things get to you. That you don't, that you don't feel wrong about how you are. 
always being you is the meaning of life. I think. It's, it's weird when you put it that way, because that's not really the meaning of life, but to me, that's, that's how I've always thought of it. Is that, you know, life to other people may mean, you know, life in general, the human species, whatever. But to me, life is something that is individual. And everybody experiences life differently. And I think that if you are you and you're honest about who you are and you're honest about everything, then you can find a fabrication of happiness and happiness in a in a sense is the meaning of life it's what everybody strives to be it's what everybody strives for and a lot of people don't find it because they're too busy trying to find happiness don't ever try to find happiness let happiness find you okay let that fabrication of happiness find you. It'll never last forever, but when it when it's there, hold on to it and enjoy it. And yeah, so that's that. This is a long ass video. I might cut some of my needless rambling rambling out of this video. Uh, we got a decent bit of this done. This is the area where Wormtail comes out. And uh, Tom Riddle's grave will be about right here. I will make a video in a couple days when this is done. And you'll see how it looks. But this is how it is now. Got to build a whole bunch of naked trees and such. So yeah, thank you guys for your questions. I really appreciate this. This was fun to do. Um... Maybe I'll do a Q&A at some point in the future, maybe when we when we reach a thousand subs, hopefully, if we reach a thousand subs, or two thousand subs, maybe even more, maybe a million sub Q&A, that'd be fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, I know it's long, but if you've stayed around until the end, then thank you, you're a real trooper, and I appreciate your questions, and I appreciate you watching this video, and I appreciate everything about you, because you are awesome, and don't, don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!